Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we're, uh, we have our Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel, with us. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. Although today it's not real sunny, Noah, is it? It's not. It's kind of, uh, kind of dreary, but I just have to say that anyway. Right. But uh, we're, we're very pleased. Uh, once again, like I said, we have our presentation series, and this uh, case study has been sent to us uh, by our good friends in Egypt, actually. Wow, it's come a long way. So we've come a long way, and this is actually uh, send this motor to the clink. Uh, if anybody's familiar with the cement industry, clinker is the product that they make, and uh, this motor is a hydraulic motor for the uh, clinker cooling process. Hmm. Uh, and uh, just a little bit of feedback on that clinker cooling process. Um, the faster you can cool that clinker, Noah, uh, the higher quality clinker you get. So this is a very critical application to ensure that the quality of the product you're manufacturing is of good standard. So we learn not only about motor troubleshooting, but a little bit about the clinker process. Yes, uh, so we're, we're, we're covering many bases today. Certainly our goal is to educate you, the consumer, and the person interested in education. And nothing like learning about clinker on a rainy day in sunny Tampa, Florida. That's right. So let's go on. Uh, start off here. Uh, we can see what we're dealing with. It's a 380-volt motor, 74 horsepower, 55 kW, 103 full load amps, and a 1475 RPM. So not an overly large motor we're talking no, about. No, no, probably fairly common for that uh, process that you were describing and uh, it is it's obviously uh you know overseas in terms of the voltages is more commonly a uh, a 50 hertz rpm as well with the 1475 and uh, 380 is a very common voltage in that area of the world. Okay. So basic uh, these are the basics of this motor or nameplate information of this motor. Here is our first look at it. Uh, uh, our power results page and well shows trouble hence why we said send this motor to the clink to the clink and yeah essentially we're going to put it in jail uh look tell us a little bit about the uh, current uh, imbalance and impedance imbalance i see red on here yeah red is generally bad and, and not it still certainly wants your attention when you see it uh, we do like to look and compare the performance of the current imbalance value versus the impedance imbalance value we often look at the impedance imbalance as a uh, a good indication of the phase relationship on a three-phase motor. Uh, and, and normal readings are going to be well down, you know, less than 5% for motors this size, not uncommon. Uh, a 15% impedance imbalance is definitely worth alarming and looking into. And we like to look at that current imbalance to determine whether that might be a little bit more stator related versus, you know, power circuit related. Um, as your impedance imbalance grows larger than the current imbalance, we start to lean more towards the stator. Mm -hmm. um, if they are equal or less than, uh, if impedance is equal or less than the current imbalance, we tend to lean towards the power circuit. Gotcha. So, and also, would we also worry about the excess heat that's being generated by this current imbalance? Is that a concern for us? or? Yes, and it, 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 it's 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 worse the higher in load you get. Notice this person's running the motors at about 77 to 80% load. So a current imbalance is gonna have a, uh, a larger impact on the heat production. Um, the negative sequence currents that can flow through the motor, almost like trying to make the motor turn backwards, uh, are creating higher load than necessary uh, for the given, uh, for the given actual, for the actual load. Mm -hmm. uh, so it may be only asking for, you know, let's say 50 horsepower, but it's gonna get you know, it's it's drawing 70 as a result of the the excess uh, you know reverse sequence current. So this is our Emax test, and of course this is going to say, hey, we need to do some further testing. The nice thing about the MC Emax is you have the ability to secure that motor and do offline testing, which is very important because with this information, yes, it's pointing us in a specific direction, but you want correlation, correct? You want confirming technology to really make you feel more secure in your decision as to what the next step is. Absolutely. You've got a technician doing a normal route with an online test. He sees something in alarm, and, and the next step is to put a work order in to shut this thing down and take another look. Okay. So here we have our three-minute standard test, uh, also performed uh, right after the Emax. 
Red is bad, as we mentioned earlier. We need to do further investigating. Well, we have a 33% resistive imbalance, 10% inductive imbalance. That should draw your attention to, well, when we get a chance to shut this motor down, which it already is, or pull this motor from the application, we need to do some further investigation. Yes, if I'm the technician in this situation, I'm giving my head a shake at this point. The flag is up, and I'm going to retest this because I, as much as you know, you see the 15% impedance imbalance, and, that, and it definitely raises a concern. Uh, I wouldn't have necessarily expected this type of imbalance with an offline test. And what it does is it really raises the bar in terms of the severity. A 33% resistive imbalance uh, is, is possibly indicative of a, a major high resistance connection, a possible lost coil in the, in the stator windings uh, in a multiple in hand type scenario. Uh, this is bad. This is something that, that we need to definitely now separate the, the, you know, the power circuit from the motor and verify where it's at. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to do another look at the insulation. We're going to bypass the, the phase to phase and we're going to do a, what we call our polarization index. And as you can see here, we put a graph of what we expect to see, but this is what the actuality was. We, we see some breakdown and some choppiness in there. Yeah, this is the classic contamination indication from the polarization index test. And, and one that, that although it's, it's, it certainly warrants an attention, this by itself may not have been the primary reason to go further in investigation. Is that 33% and that high impedance imbalance with the Emacs? That these are pretty high levels, right? They really are. We're looking at what, 80,000 megaohms? Yeah. Uh, you know, these are these are acceptable values on a low voltage. This is considered a low voltage motor. Uh, you know, le legitimately, we could go down to five meg before we really threw up the flag. But the nice thing about the profile is looking at the actual graph versus can, just right. numbers. We cannot say enough about the profile over just the quantitative measurements. Uh, in fact, we're you know we continue to try to uh, influence the, the standards to make sure that they emphasize that the profile can mean a lot, not just the quantitative values. Okay. Whoa, we take it apart, and this is what we see. Got a lot of grease in here. Uh, apparently, the uh, for the grease to go out, the plug was, or the port was plugged. Happens all the time. You know, uh, what kills motor motors more? Over-greasing or under-greasing? Uh -huh. It's definitely over-greasing, and that's more, you know, reference towards bearings, but it's all the same. And anytime you have a, a blocked output, the input keeps filling up, and eventually it's going to get into the winding. And you talked about heat as well, and that that ins that uh, grease is really acting it's as a thermal there. blanket, is it not? Absolutely, absolutely. So the, the thermal issues here are extreme. Uh, and, and again, this is another surprise. This case study continues to offer us a, a, one surprise after the other. And again, as a technician, I look at this and I have to give my head a shake again. Why? You know, I was showing contamination on my TI test but not to the value I would expect at this point, which again starts to lean you towards what kind of grease is that. This is probably a non-conductive grease that is often utilized in, to, to prevent you know, issues as a, as a result of overflowing into the winding. So mm -hmm. that being said, you know, this is very likely, a, uh, you know, it's, it's a bad contamination of grease, but likely not a situation where it's gonna be a ground issue as much as just a contamination and a concern over thermal thermal heating could have overheated, caused maybe the what we're seeing with the the, the inductive imbalance and the impedance imbalance on this motor. So we find out that there was an actual stator fault in here, and you know the proof is really in the pudding. The motor has been rehabilitated, or so to speak, we can pull yeah. it out of the clink and put it back into service. Back and, into and society. Quite a quite a different change here, is it not? Oh, 33 to zero. You can't ask for any better than zero. That's uh, a perfect conductive path between each three phases, perfectly matched, and and this is the ideal repair. Um, certainly, the the investigation, if I remember, if I recall right, they actually attempted to remove the grease in an effort to salvage what was left. But right. usually when you're looking at a 33% resistive imbalance, it's obvious that it's going beyond just a contamination. And issue. just to add to that, they did remove the grease. They did clean it up and get all of that out of there, but they took a standard test and it was still showing these elevated levels of resistive imbalance and inductive imbalance. So the next step was obviously, let's just start all over. Correct, correct. So let's do a full breakdown rehabilitation. <laughs> now here's our Emacs test afterwards. And you can see these have all changed. Right, they're right down the line with what is expected. Impedance imbalance. Five, six percent, uh, well accepted for motors this size in this application. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do the look at our polarization index. This was the insulation system loaded with grease and grime. Now this is without it. So we basically doubled Absolutely. our insulation. 
we're up to what now? We're approaching 250,000 yeah. meg a quarter of a, of a, of a, of a tera ohm at this point. So yeah, the, the insulation now here, this is a quanti looking at it quantitatively and qualitatively. Uh, it's still not perfect. We are dealing with such high values of resistance to ground that you're going to get a little bit of, of variation. But these, but these really high extreme quantitative values of resistance to ground make us so, so much more comfortable. So let's get to the actual numbers. Had this motor failed in place, like we said, it's a very critical motor for a critical application. There would have been a 10 hour delay in production at a cost of nearly 300,000 US dollars. That's pretty significant. Uh, economy the way it is, gas, yeah, huh? that's quite a few tanks of gas. That's uh, some uh, electrical costs as well. Uh, so you really want to pay attention to that number because it's an excellent cost savings. And the, to replace the motor would be around 3,000 US dollars. So wow. really this was more, uh, the, the replacement costs uh, were not that excessive, but you know, from a, just a production, loss of production mm -hmm. standpoint, uh, this, is, uh, this was a very critical application. Well, we'd like to thank you for your time, as well as thank uh, the gentleman from, uh, uh, from Egypt who sent us this case study from the cement industry. Uh, if you have any further questions uh, from, from us, uh, Noah Bethel or myself, feel free to call us or give us a, an email. Uh, you can contact us at www.pdma.com or give us a call at 813-621-6463. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again sometime. And if you have a case study out there that you'd like to share with us, please send it to us. Have a great day.